uh, how much each of the uh, how much each of the subnetworks explain uh, variance within those uh, the variance of within those uh, contrasts. And I'm going to go to show you the figure. Sorry for the scrolling. So this is an example subject data from an example subject. Whereas, uh, and on the x-axis, we have the network graph density, as I said, the different thresholds for determining the sparsity of the graph. And on the y-axis, we have the network uh, homogeneity. And as we see that as, as more the, 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 the network or the graph uh, is a sparse, uh, the more homogeneous are the subnetworks. And also for the task patterns, as more as the network is sparse, the more uh, uh, variance is explained in the task activation maps. But if we measure if we measure the average across all the subjects, we find that the optimal uh, graph sparsity is around zero point one percent, where where eighty three subnetworks from all all the brain networks in the brain emerge, and from the DMN nine subnetworks uh, in, uh, in 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 every subject. So those networks are a par parietal subnetwork, a ventromedial subnetwork, a pregenual subnetwork, a retrospinial subnetwork, and also a small subnetwork in the posterior medial temporal lobe that also uh, involves the hippocampus. And there are four lateralized uh, subnetworks termed the left and right anterior and posterior lateral subnetworks. So these are the networks I'm going to show you. So this 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 is uh, these are the networks in one uh, subject the the first subject, and as you can see the largest one is the parietal network, and this is interesting because uh, they found that the parietal network has is a central hub within the DMN, while the other smaller networks are kind of the connector hubs with other uh, networks uh, in the brain. So uh, the different the different subnetworks exhibit differ differential uh, task uh, task engagement, and specifically, like in every subject, they found that the scene versus face contrast elicited strong positive activations in subnetwork within the inferior uh, medial parietal and retrosperineal and inferior temporal cortex, and strong negative activations in the subnetworks in the medial parietal and ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Uh, the, the spatial the spatial variance of these activation maps was significantly explained by all the DMN uh, subnetworks. It's also for the word words fixation and the, the hand tongue, but uh, the, the, the amount of variance explained in those contrasts was uh, much, much lower than the scene versus face. And here in this table, this is important, they showed that these uh, networks are, the subnetworks are consistent across uh, subjects. And here, uh, the percentage indicates how much uh, does it does each subnetwork exist in each subject, and whether it is a unitary network or does it split across subjects or not, and whether it is uh, uh, complete or or is is uh, or is kind of embedded completely within the large scale default mode network. And we can see here that this 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 image shows uh, how ma how many subjects does each network uh, uh, is, is 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 each network involved uh, found in. So we have the number of subjects from two to six, uh, depending on the spatial location. The the cerebellum mo mostly shows the most consistent uh, uh, anatomical region where the networks uh, are show good correspondence across uh, subjects. Sorry for the for the scrolling. So uh, the main findings of this study is that the subnetworks of the DMN represent task patterns more specifically than large uh, scale networks, and that uh, individualized DMN subnetworks may be critical. This is in discussion may be critical for the use in clinical uh, populations such as uh, post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, because of their connections to the frontal parietal system and also uh, the language system, and this this is the most I think this is, this is the most important figure of uh, of the study. It shows the different nodes of the DMN uh, of the uh, of the subnet subnetworks of the DMN, and also nodes from the language network uh, in uh, in teal I think, and in yellow the uh, the nodes of the frontal parietal control network. 
And as we can see, the red, which include the parietal, the parietal default mode network, are more centralized within the DMN, while other networks, such as the retrospinial, the right dorsolateral, and the left dorsolateral, uh, or more, more, more or less the lateral networks of the DMN, uh, show connections to the language and the frontal parietal control network. Okay, so one, uh, and also, sorry for, for forgetting this, one of the most important results here is that the ball signals uh, in the DMN subnetworks uh, have uh, relative delay. So the, the parietal network, which is the, the largest one, uh, kind of leads all of the other networks in, uh, the, in, the, in the ball signal lead lag uh, uh, phase difference. And this indicates that, uh, that there's kind of a hierarchical structure or or kind of uh, activation act activation flow across this, the subnetworks, indicating different roles within the DMN. Well, for the limitations of this study, although the uh, the authors only state that uh, the only limitation is the zero point one uh, percent graph density, I think there are other uh, limitations that could be that could uh, have been uh, avoided such as including more task uh, contrasts. They only included three task contrasts and they don't know, they don't mention why they included those three uh, exactly and not others. Uh, uh, and this, uh, this also brings us to another, another limitation is that uh, the number nine or nine subnetworks is derived from the fact that they only chose those uh, three contrasts and they do not uh, investigate other uh, spatial, spatial scales uh, in the DMN and whether they play other roles uh, across different uh, tasks. And uh, in general, these are the main uh, findings of, uh, of the study. And I think it could be in, the fu in future work, uh, uh, in, in, future, in future work, there, there could be uh, other uh, approaches to study those subnetworks and actually have more specific uh, identification of the roles. Uh, because in, if, if you read carefully the discussion, uh, the authors mostly hypothesize what certain net subnetworks would do based on uh, previ previous findings, which kind of, uh, I think it's kind of an informal reverse inference in this case. But uh, I, th I think with, uh, with the help of, meta, for example, meta-analyses and also uh, more tasks and in individuals, for instance, there's the uh, individual brain charting database, which, uh, in which uh, 10 subjects as well uh, perform uh, hun hundreds of tasks. And this data set could be actually used to further uh, class, uh, characterize those uh, subnetworks. And that's it. Uh, Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, we did manage to uh, uh, authenticate ourselves, so we're now live as well. <laughs> um, thank you for the, for the presentation. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is quite a talked about topic at the moment where these networks overlap in the brain and why. So I think this was a fantastic choice of uh, exciting science this morning. Are there any questions? This is a first. No? Okay. Um, in that case, uh, I... Oh, sorry, Victor, go ahead. Sorry, I was looking for the uh, the hand uh, raising button. I was like, where is it? Where is it? Uh, could you just come back to uh, how these networks were uh, detected exactly in the brain? I just missed it when you said it. Okay. Just so the... the yeah, sorry, sorry for the scrolling. Okay, so they use the InfoMath approach where, uh, where it, it is applied to a dense uh, connectivity matrix from each subject. Okay, all right, all right. And this, uh, and this dense matrix is first thresholded according to a certain level. For, they use this range of 0.01 to 5%. And then the InfoMap would, would kind of do a community search and commu community construction of those. Uh, of the all right. Yeah. And the more the, the sparser the, the graph, the more subnetworks or submodules you, you would get. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. it's, uh, it's not based on um, a segmentation of networks uh, like a, a priori. Uh... No, there's no priors. No priors. Okay. Yeah. Only the, the, the dense resting state connectivity matrix of each. Uh, mm -hmm. subject. 
Okay, that that's really interesting. I, I just w was wondering about the, uh, the the lag that you were mentioning, uh, yeah. because I think there is a theory that says that uh, most networks in that racing state networks are actually kind of the same fluctuation of the brain with uh, modifications here and there, but um, with the time lag between them. And you have this especially uh, reverse activation, uh, well, activation with you have the DMN and the, um, uh, how it's called, the, uh, um, the dorsal attentional network where they have like, Yes, this antagonistic act activation, the activation uh, dynamic. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Uh, the dorsal attention and the default mode, mode network, they have this an antagonistic. Yes, uh, exactly. Activation. And so you could also say that it's kind of a lag, but uh, a lag that is from one, uh, like half uh, a period of uh, uh, oscillation uh, of um, resting state signal somewhat. And there are other, other uh, networks that kind of also follow this kind of thing. So it would be interesting to, to know if um, this lag actually does not relate these um, part of the network to another resting state network. And that would actually make it like, either part of another racing state network or um, the link between um, the football network and another network, like uh, the, the prior step uh, between them. That would be interesting to check. Yes, uh, in, the, in this study, they mostly measured the, the, the lag within the DMN, mm. uh, but also I think between the frontal parietal network and the language network and the subnetworks of the DMN. I'm just gonna finish the figure. I'm sorry for the, this. Um, yeah, here. Um, oh, no, so this is only, so they are only showing the results within uh, the DMN uh, subnetworks, the, the time lag of the bold activation. But uh, on, on, some, on some level, they hypothesized that uh, since the, 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 central, the central network the parietal or the DMN is, is leading all the others, then there's some kind of uh, asymmetric relationship between them. And that those networks kind of, uh, the sub the other subnetworks, the lateral ones act as kind of a gateway for the control network and the language network mm -hmm. to have an input into the DMN. All right. And also I just saw that uh, the, uh, the actual lag is quite small. So it's, uh... Of course, because this it's is very, very slow. The the DMN. The, yeah, yeah. So so it's definitely like still part of it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anna has a question as well. Yeah. Yes. Um. Thanks a lot, much for presenting. Super interesting paper. I was wondering at the end you were mentioning that um they speculated about other subnetworks um, that might exist and, um, and explained them. Is there one, or I'm not sure how much into depth they went there, but is there one that really uh, caught your attention that you can maybe explain uh, more? Or is it just something that they mentioned that there might be other subnetworks? Uh, the thing, no, they, they mentioned that other, other, other spatial scales, for example, they used a very, uh, very fine spatial scale, which only leaves 0.1% of the whole connections in the, in the matrix, the connectivity matrix. But okay. if they go to more coarser scales, like, uh, they found nine subnetworks, for instance, in the DMN at the more coarser scale, they might find four or five. And whether this uh, aggregation of the smaller networks means something, they didn't. They didn't actually in, uh, go into their into their in detail. Okay. Um, All right. But then I misunderstood. Uh, sorry. From from my from my research, I've uh, I worked on the pre on the lateral prefrontal cortex, and in some regions there and some regions I noticed that they overlap with the so-called left anterior lateral and right anterior lateral uh, uh, networks of the DMN. And, how, and I noticed that how they kind of interact with both the language and the frontal parietal network. But uh, I, th I think that there could be su further subnetworks at even finer scales or even coarser scales that could play differential roles. Okay, cool, thanks. Thank you. So you mentioned that they identified nine networks. Yeah. 
but they didn't specify why they limited themselves to that number. So I was wondering if how that matches with the literature, if that is a consistent number that we see, if that's an empirical number or a best guess number. No, they actually did this analysis. So uh, they averaged how much each subnetwork is homogeneous uh, and how much each network is uh, explains uh, task activity. And they averaged the results across the subjects. And in fact, they found that this particular uh, density of 0.1% kind of maximizes both the the, the explained variance in tasks and the resting state homogeneity of, of the subnetworks. So it's more or less a method driven uh, uh, choice. It's not kind of, it's not related to uh, previous literature. Uh, okay. But, but the difference is not really uh, with, if you, if, you, if you look at this figure, I'm showing now like in, in C, uh, the difference between mm -hmm. the different densities is not that much and they mentioned that they didn't, they didn't find there's not significant uh, differences between the different uh, network de graph densities. And then the second question I have is that we're comparing quite mixed bags, so to speak. So the DMN uh, compromises many cognitive functions and obviously resting state, you don't really know what the participants are up to uh, during the acquisition of the data because they do something even though we don't measure it in sure. a task specific way but something is always going on uh, starting with it's not the most natural environment to be uh, enclosed in a noisy scanner tube yeah. um, but also likewise language per se is a very complex cognitive function so you can then segregate into many different linguistic subcomponents. So I was wondering if um, for language they, they were a bit more specific in terms of which subcomponent of language that was associated with or if it's a mixed bag associated with a mixed bag of functions. Unfortunately, the, 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 the latter uh, thing. So they didn't investigate the language nor the control network in detail. Uh, and uh, as I said also in the limitations that uh, they didn't mention, but I kind of noticed is that they only use three uh, task uh, contrasts, which doesn't reveal a lot, actually. Uh, it's just saying that, okay, we have those three task contrasts and our network explain, our subnetworks explain uh, a percentage, a huge percentage of variance, but they are not related to specific, let's say, language uh, components. And uh, also with the resting state connectivity, they use like the, uh, the language and the control network as bags of different nodes uh, that could be involved in uh, different uh, language components or cognitive control components. Uh, so interesting. Just, and I, I think the findings are most most mostly fall under like a proof of concept that the DMN actually interacts uh, with other uh, networks. Which, which you would anticipate, right? So it's yeah. nice to, to see that uh, empirically proven. Um, so I mentioned that there's currently quite a debate or interest in, in the overlap between those networks. And I was wondering what your opinion was on a theory that we discussed over the last two days in Freiburg, where Cornelius Weiler presented his um, idea that the DMN network is tapping into limbic structures that are more medial in the brain and focused on internal representation feelings. So everything that's going on inside of us, whereas the language network is more lateral and externally facing, you express yourself to the world. And his idea was that those two systems overlap in the anterior frontal and the parietal lobes to have that exchange between the internal world and the external world. Um, so I was just wondering how this paper might feed into that discussion and what you take on that is. Well, uh, regarding the, the, the anatomy, like the anterior and the parietal, uh, did he mention a, a, as if, uh, if there were medial or lateral regions in the anterior and parietal lobe? Because in this study, they found that the lateral uh, subnetworks of the DMN are the ones that interface or stream into the language uh, and the control networks. Uh, but I, th I, I think that 
Uh, it, I, I, I think this hypothesis uh, is worth investigating that the DMN kind of uh, uh, kind of interfaces with those networks in order to support uh, in, in internal uh, representation of uh, the, the like support the inter uh, manifestation of internal goals and possibly long-term memories into the actual task uh, or ex external task uh, performance. For example, in, uh, in, in, me in memory tasks, it could be uh, engaged, uh, even though uh, the subjects are not actually at rest. Uh, as you know, previously the DMN was thought of the task negative network, which is kind of not true after the many empirical uh, findings. Uh, but, but yes, the, the implication of uh, the DMN within tasks carries some internal cognition component with it probably uh, in language and also in control. Thank you. Yeah, I think the next couple of years we're going to have to make very exciting findings on how there is now. Um, I don't see the question and that's all the time we have today so thank you very much Marsh for presenting this exciting paper um, where we discussed chat GPT you can't hear me no. oh yeah sorry the, the internet is really bad in the hotel here <laughs> I'm just gonna let you go and send you a tweet to remind you uh, about stay thank you for being here bye right